I think number one, there would be an increased police presence <laughs> in our communities. Yeah. I think judges would uh, distribute harsher sentences. Mm -hmm. I think there would be consequences, real tangible consequences. The reason why they don't do that to the Chinese community, to the Indian community, is because unlike us, mm -hmm. they have a backing Remain clear with fear sweeps. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. Black girl. All right, let me, um, let me, let me, let me, let me do this because I think it makes it easier for people who are watching to kind of understand. Um, <clears throat> What what what's it's like it's like monopoly. This is this the best way I, I this is how I see it. It's it's like monopoly and and <laughs> if you played monopoly growing up, you know what happens. You you after a while you play the game long enough, people have bought up all the, the, the property. Then you got that you got a couple people who start putting houses down real early. They got the green houses up already. Then then after that, the red houses are up. Next you know the whole board. It's full of it. And it's like it's it's like uh, it's a struggle getting across to collect the two hundred dollars. Right. Because you've been landing on people's property paying out. What happened? The board has already been set. Black people helped build the board, but never had a chance to own anything in the process. So we've helped everybody else create wealth. We came to the game so late. By the time they let us in, it was like, all right, well, you can take these leftovers things that don't really have much. Well, what ended up happening was black Americans ended up doing a great job, right? We ended up having our own bank, Freeman's Bank. We started doing HBCUs. So we started building up our own stuff in our cities. And I think the people were like, hold on. We gave them nothing, right? We promised them land and then, who was it? Johnson took it back, right? So how are they still thriving? How are they doing so well? We were living within our own groups. Right. We're producing within our own groups. We're educating our own. And then, you know, we integrated, which I'm OK with. The problem is we lost a lot of that pride. We thought the fight was over because the hearts of black people are so loving. Right. We're like, oh, you know, kumbaya. We're all one. Right. As it should be. But unfortunately, there are people who don't have the same heart as everybody else in this country, white, black, Hispanic, and Asian. Unfortunately, there's some people in this country that still want to pillage off of the hard work of others, who still want to create division, right, in this country. There's still people who don't want us all to be looked at or feel like we're Americans, that we're all one. There are people who want that for their own selfish reasons. I don't know who they are. I can't call any names, I don't know. But the reality is there are a lot of people, white, black, and everything, who want you know, us to be together, who want unity and peace. People want that. And there's other people who are fighting against that. What is the reality? The reality is that black people do have to take a step back. We do have to pull our money out. We do have to pull our resources out, honestly and respectfully, and tell the nation, hey, you guys, we got to get some things in order. You know, this isn't no offense. We mean no disrespect, but our community needs to rebuild some things, and they will be happy to come back and then share and compete and give our time and our talent after we fix these things on our own and for ourselves. We need time to regroup. Hypothetically, in, that, in, in, a, in a modern context, if we did that, what do you think would happen? What do well, you think the response would be? The response would be positive on the outside, but negative on the inside. Talk because about they, because Because again, Again, we spend $1.6 trillion. Our, ex our expenses, which is a lot, is someone else's stream of income, right? This is the reality. What did Jim Jones say just the other day? He's parading around in Gucci talking about how he's ready to spend $26,000 on Gucci paraphernalia, right? This is him. Where are our own clothing lines? Where are our own luxury brands that we can spend $26,000 on? Where are they? What is the, why do we, we, we build everybody up as if we're still slaves? 
We're still building and creating things for everybody else except for our own, right? We're still doing the same things we did 400 years ago. It just looks different, right? And so again, <laughs> what did Bob Marley say? He said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. This is the key. What did Marcus Garvey say? He said, we were great before, we can be great again. The problem is we forget these things. We don't realize it, right? We are, we are investing so much time, so much energy in making everybody else better. This is why we can spend $1.6 trillion but only own 1% of the wealth, right? We have people coming to our communities, which I love them, I love everybody. Liquor stores, beauty supply stores, um, What's the other one? The uh, laundromat, gas stations, gas stations, right? Wing shops. You know how that go. You know, um, Asian food. You know, all these things come into our communities, which is cool. I don't have. There's no issue with that. I have an issue with that. Well, <laughs> well, the only issue is that we don't have our own. It's not about you know. Competition is good. It's healthy. This is capitalism. So I don't discourage it. My, my issue is if I went to a Chinese neighborhood and I try to open a soul food restaurant, they would shut me down. Well, OK, let's talk about that then. Um, do they have a right to do that? It's not about it's just about power. Thank you. It's just about power. Literally, it's always. But again, but but they understand that they understand if I give you an inch and you end up taking a mile. Right. It's it's, it's the same thing in other countries when you when you let foreign investors come in and buy up your land, right? And start building a property on, in your country, right? You gave up that ground. So other communities understand that. We we allow people, we give up all of our resources for free. And, and that is exactly why I'm a Pan-Africanist because when, if, mm -hmm. We were to redo the Montgomery bus boycott, which right. I think was one of the most effective civil rights so strategies, effective. right? Because it so hit them in effective. the pockets, right? Yeah. Not the hearts, not the head, the pockets. The pockets, man. If we were to do that again, here's what I think would happen. Mm -hmm. And I want you to respond to that after my point. I think, number one, there would be an increased police presence <laughs> in our communities. I think judges would uh, distribute harsher sentences. I think there would be consequences, real tangible consequences. The reason why they don't do that to the Chinese community, to the Indian community, is because unlike us, they have a backing. America needs a to country. answer to China, to yeah. India. Yeah. We don't have that backing. And that's why I, I think if we're having this conversation without a Pan-Africanist mindset, there's no point. Right. So I want you to respond to, especially, you know, from being a former police officer, being behind the lines. Right. 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 Are, are those are those um, assumptions, predictions, maybe? Are they valid? Why? Why not? It's not, it's not, um, I think as me looking at me from a form, from a perspective of being like an investigator, you look at all potential avenues, you look at all potential problems, um, because that's how you, that's how you devise tactics and strategies. So, so it's not, there's nothing wrong with, with, with assuming the worst or assuming the best, but you have to calculate for everything. What I would say is there's power and in uh, group work, there's power in group organization. Money is power, you guys. I think at the end of the day, we forget how powerful the dollar is because and how much spending power we do have. We're just spending in the wrong places. It's not that we don't have the money. It's not that we don't have the resources. This is why I don't believe in the, in the, the lies of the propaganda that's given to us. They want us to believe that so that we're distracted. What happens? People don't know that we even have our own black owned banks. People say, well, if I go to these banks, we talk about redlining, right? We talk about them not giving loans for people to get homes or businesses. That's true, right? Bank of America didn't give you that loan. Okay, fine. Or whoever bank. Well, what would it look like if black people pulled all their money out of all these other banks that aren't affiliated or associated with black owned businesses and you put it in black owned banks? Right. Again, we're not when I go in, in my neighborhood and I'm riding down the street, I live in a predominantly Asian community. 
um, and Hispanic community. They own blocks. They own blocks. They have banks. I can't even pronounce the name on them, right? Same thing in the Hispanic community. They have their own banks that are like international banks. They have their own things. We can do the same thing. They patron their own businesses, right? And so again, what is the reality? The reality is we have these resources in front of us. We choose not to use them because of the convenience in the moment, in the moment. What would it look like if black people decided to stop going to Walmart, stop investing in some of these luxury brands, right? But this is again, ties back to what I said earlier about the power of the music industry, the entertainment industry. They're all working together in concert with one another because if I can promote this artist to promote this brand, you're gonna spend money on this brand Everyone else is going to do it too, right? No one is saying, hey, you guys, let's get together and have our own brand promote our own things, right? So again, we have, and I think for me, I am more of a, I can be cynical sometimes. I'm cynical because I know the value of our people. And because I know the value of our people, I don't, I don't have conversations that are based in us being weak. Because there's nothing weak about black people at all. And so when people say, huh, we're being oppressed, I'm like, it's competition. Grow up. This is about this is about money. Let, let's talk about choice, because I think that's a very fascinating thing.